numbers. And, and it's such a simple gesture, but it's so right on. And I think it's very hard to do something so simple and take such a simple idea and present it in this kind of minimal way and do it right, just right. Because there's not a lot of room for error, you know, when you're working in a very dense, accumulative way, you know, that can also be very forgiving for an artist. You know, you can get away with things. You can say, eh, you know what, it kind of melts into the composition. And, you know, but, but, but if all you've got is the grid or, or this one plane, or, you know, you, you've got to hit it just right, or else it's really off. <laughs> I think with that question of time and interpretation, so if we, we're talking about time, of course, in two ways. One is the time in, in the creation and versus time in the um, interpretation. But um, I guess I, I wonder if that's part of the distinction between digital methods and analog methods. Um, is that ambiguity that might be more apparent in the analog collages that there's more um, potential for multiple interpretations as opposed to, I'm, and this is more of a question than a, than a comment, I suppose I'm asking if, if you would agree with that idea that there's, that ambiguity might be more apparent in the analog collages. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why do you say that? Because, um, because really what, 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 what I take that to mean is, um, is, is that idea of reading between the lines. And when the, when the, when the lines really meaning the, the physical, like the physical rupture or transition between one element and another, where you can experience that in a, in a more directly physical or analog way, um, in, in the digital realm, those spaces, the actual spaces and then the perceived spaces between those fragments um, is, 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 so, is, is so flat and, and kind of impenetrable that, that you read it, that you read those spaces differently. Um, you imagine them, but you don't actually experience them physically, um, optically. It's just different. Well, we were talking about that with looking at with the Raymond Abraham when I got to go to MoMA a couple weeks ago and see that. Uh, collage that I've always been obsessed with, from the view back on planet Earth from the kind of helmet of the astronaut out the little portal, that the collage tends to, and we were talking about this last night with the Myers also, that trying to even distinguish whether or not they were physical or whether they were screen prints and what, because some of them are a combination of both, it's sort of blurring what's digital and what's handmade. Um, but in the, re the nature of actually having to see collage, to understand it, and the Raymond Abraham one was actually not as impressive in person to see the way that the pieces were constructed, and the lighting of these objects. I mean, the, the light, because you start to get shadows off the depth of the objects, and I think um, Andrew had mentioned to me one time, the first time I saw the Cornell boxes, he said they have to be shown in low light. And most galleries screw that up, and his opinion was because you have to be able to see a reflection, and you have to be able to project into them. And I mean, that's if you've seen, I mean, you see the variation in terms of how those are displayed, it makes a world of difference. And also, I mean, there, yeah, there's just a lot of different conditions, but I think that when you get into looking, when the digital realm, you can go to a monograph and you get almost the same object. So like something like that, I mean, the thing I find on all of these in these galleries is that there is the need to get within the centimeter of them. I mean, to really understand them, which is unique to this process. That's the intimacy that you're talking about. I'm not sure how much time we have to we take questions? Okay, so we can take some questions from the audience. I agree. So, yeah. okay. Did you have, um, I was wondering if you really do have to know history. Um, would like a child pasting together pictures, is that collage thing? If they don't have a sense of, if they haven't like reflected on their experiences and they're just taking whatever's in front of them, arranging them. I got this quote just to interrupt on that. It, Orham Pamuk wrote, you must view the objects not as real things, but as memories. And it's a story that I really wanted to tell because we were looking through the Tumblr site, and I think um, Mary Miller had posted this image of this small woman looking at this guy with a moon on his head. And we were at lunch, and Augie said to me, I showed it to him, I said, isn't this beautiful? He said, is the woman really that small? And is that a real man? 
and it was one of these great moments, like when Jared says that his son in the Toyota symbol always sees the horns of the bull. Like this idea of like seeing things in a way that like they're not supposed to be real objects, they're supposed to be memories, or they're supposed to stand for something else. And how hard it is to get into that realm of seeing the, the pharaoh as being the same size as everyone else, but somehow distorted for a purpose. Um, almost becoming completely innocent. Right? But, and um, so, you know, just putting things down on a page, you know, not knowing why necessarily, right? Or, um, or not having that memory attached to what you're doing. Well, you could have, I don't know, I mean, I sort of disagree. I think you can have them, the child can have plenty of memories attached to what they're doing. I'm drawing a picture of my dog last week with my house and, you know, I mean, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, or putting down brilliant things. I but guess. I think free association becomes a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, they're, you can they're, they're probably a parrot, not. Parrot, parrot fire breathing dragon that is making toast. Like, <laughs> like that, and that seems completely logical to a four year old. That, and you're thinking, oh, that's sort of interesting. Well, kids just draw from a smaller repertory of associations, that's all. I don't think it's any less legitimate. Um, and, and, and it's not even a, I mean, I, and I don't even think it's important whether we call it art or not. It's their, create, it's their creativity manifesting, you know. Um, but, I, but I always find it really interesting what kids make, in general, whether they're drawing, collaging, or what have you, and I think that's probably why um, why collage is such a is such a um, such an attractive language for people, because it really does. <coughs> no matter even even the most sort of non art person, um, a non art inclined person, um, has some experience of collaging, whether they kept a scrapbook as a kid or or made collages in kindergarten. So we all have. So we all have some basic kind of sense memory of this process. It's a, just one, it's a good question, but kind of an unfair one. You know, like, do I need to know history? Does a kid need to, like, yes, yes, the little kid doesn't need to know The little kid doesn't need to know, but you probably should. But you do. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I'm just a kid. I, I think yeah, a collage is yeah. very dependent on accident. And I mean, if you look at someone like Eisenstein, the, the, that was a radical break, the juxtaposition of different ideas, to have a machine gun fired, to have a bridge, to have a horse falling out. I mean, the, that, and filmically, that was un, unimaginable that you could juxtapose different ideas like that and have people understand what you were saying, that you could create new meaning. And again, you refer that directly to the idea of haiku, um, that the imagination takes, takes form. I think that the juxtaposition of objects sometimes becomes easier for, for children because they're there's no history of how to combine objects. And so the way in which they apply paint and then put glue, glue becomes a material, um, bending things the way you cut stuff out. There's just, there's no, and that's not to say that it's art or it's not art, but in terms of the process, there's more chance for accident. And the problem is they're not able to decipher the accidents in the same way that someone who's knowledgeable of, of precedent would be. So is one is making the others read. Right, you have to be able to read that. But just to add to that, but it is communication. It is, a, you know, so big time. There are relationships. Yeah. This is definitely coming from an architecture background and this art, but I think it relates to both. And you keep talking about process and analog digital, but, and the question brought up earlier about um, the only problem is can the craft distract the concept or the final image? And I've seen a lot of times, especially final reviews and things like that, where montage actually begins to just mask that design or begins to sort of sugar coat, you know, kind of coat over the things that they don't want to see or kind of come to the front. And I was wondering for the artists and graphic designers, and if I can see how it really clearly relates to architecture montage being good ammunition, but how does that in your own like teaching and stuff relate to the bad design being masked over with just both montage or collage or things like that? Well that's that's the everyday problem I think in classes, right? Or you know, that um, that the intoxication of something really beautiful um, brings you in, right? But 
but it doesn't take very long. I mean, maybe perhaps a few seconds, if you're lucky, to understand that there's nothing below that. And suddenly, the, you know, the surface itself even becomes less interesting, you know, because there's nothing that's being said. Um, so, I don't know. I think you can figure that one out pretty quickly, you know, as anybody, any audience could. I have two, maybe two, two responses, and they're both like, contra you can contradict. I contradict myself. Uh, one, like I don't think, I think all painting is is messing up or like hiding your mistakes. So if somebody was photo montaging their mistakes, good move. Like you can spot them and try to camouflage them. That's kind of good design in, long, in the long run. Like, you know, if you know how to edit really well, you're a good painter. If you can't edit very good, you're like, this looks great. <laughs> it doesn't look great, you bet, you know. So like that's a good thing. The other thing, like talking about photo montage or analog or digital, from my, my own studio practice, I have like a knee-jerk reaction. And maybe a lot of artists do. Like, what kind of artist are you? Why, ask any artist, what kind of artist are you? It's like, oh, well, I do everything. It's like we have a knee-jerk reaction to being labeled as anything. So I don't like get in my studio and think, today, analog, roll my sleeves.